interesting f Everybody lies. Some are terrible at it. Some do it frighteningly well. Sooner or later, most of us get caught. What comes next is the most interesting thing in all the world. The truth. This is Liar City. The McMartin Preschool Trial, by most contemporary accounts, was a pretty shameful moment in American history. A group of ordinary, well-meaning citizens were railroaded by a society hell-bent on protecting children from even the faintest whisper of wrongdoing. The fact that most of the people doing the railroading thought that they were doing the right thing is sort of beside the point. Real damage was done, and just like in a lot of cases we discuss on Liar City, the origin point can be traced back to a single person. In this case, that person, Judy Johnson, was quickly overshadowed by an angry public who were convinced that the fire Johnson started existed somewhere other than in her own mind. As McMartin juror John Brees later said, Once the kids started saying it, the parents believed it. When the parents believed it, the kids started believing it. So that's what we're talking about this week, and with me today is Darian. Alright, hi Darian. I fell into a ring of liars. All right. So a few episodes ago, we talked about uh, Mike Warnke, Michelle Remembers, the Satanic Panic, all that stuff. Absolutely. And we sort of alluded to two big cases that came out of that whole bunch of nonsense. Out of the panic, yeah. Yeah, the um, the Freedmans, capturing the Freedmans, mm -hmm. and the McMartin preschool trial. Ah, uh, yes. Due to uh, voluminous requests. Voluminous? Yeah. Like my hair. Yes, exactly like <laughs> okay. your hair. We're going to talk about the McMartin preschool trial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Slight miscarriage of justice there. Slight. Ever <laughs> so slight. So, like I said, Lawrence Pazder, Michelle Smith, Mike Warnke, these people were responsible for the beginnings of the satanic panic. Experts. Yeah. Experts, as it were. And that led to a whole new class of crime. What was at first referred <laughs> to as satanic ritual abuse. And then just became ritual abuse. Right, because they the Satan... Really, yeah, they couldn't really... Seemed a little... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to get rid of the religious connotations and just to make the people pure evil. So I promised that we'd dig a little deeper into that. And okay. um, that's what we're going to talk about this week. Excellent. Yeah. Well, not excellent, but... <laughs> so uh, what what do you remember about the McMartin case? Um, pretty much everything you already mentioned. The uh, It was another one of those abuse in a preschool thing. Mm-hmm. Where, spoiler alert, nothing was ever found or done. Right. No one had ever proven that anyone had touched anyone, to the best of my knowledge. And it went on for years. It, it did. It went on for a lot of years. And it was very expensive, as I recall. This is where you come in and go, super expensive. You know, crazy expensive. You're yeah, right. Yeah, all right. I'll just give an overview. A brief overview. Uh, well, not brief, but there's nothing brief about this case. Unfortunately, like yeah. no, yeah. All right. So the McMartin Preschool, it was a daycare, like you said, in Manhattan Beach, California, mm -hmm. which then, as now, is a really nice, you know, affluent yeah, Oceanside yeah. town, and it's just south of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And the owner was a 79-year-old woman named Virginia McMartin, and she opened the place, and she hired family members and people she knew from church to help run it. Yeah, a lot of preschools work like that. Yep. These people were uh, her daughter, Peggy McMartin Bucky, her grandson, Ray Bucky, mm -hmm. Ray's sister, Peggy Ann Bucky, and three teachers who weren't related, uh, Marianne Jackson, Betty Rader, and Babette Spittler. Okay. So the school was super popular. This Thank was, you, um, I read an essay from a, a woman named Debbie Nathan, Okay. Um, who I tried very unsuccessfully to get on the show. Fair enough. Yep. She talked about this uh, daycare hysteria from the perspective of the late 70s, early 80s. It was a time of an unseen but very real and rapid upheaval in American society. It was women in the workplace, like for mm -hmm. real women in the workplace, like right, most not, women yeah. in the workplace for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And daycares sprung up out of that. Because they were necessary. Because they were, they were no necessary. Yeah. And the fear of that, and also a sexist belief that women should still be in the home, and that children shouldn't be in daycares, right, sort of led to this a little bit. Right, that they should be taking care of their children, which that, I don't understand. That how could you 
and it's kind of your fault when this shit happens. Abandon your child. Right. It was a really interesting perspective that I hadn't really thought about. No, me neither. But yeah, just as recently as 1983, it was sort of weird for women to work and put the kid in daycare. See, now that was that was never odd for me. My mother worked my entire life. Sure, mine too. All right, yeah. That's both both my parents worked. I went to school. That was my job. Right. But I never really You're right. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah. That's and you think if you think back that it would have been earlier than that. That maybe through the late 60s early 70s periods where you had the earliest career women. I would say, in my mind, if I'm thinking of it, yeah, I would say early 60s. And I'm pretty, I'm relatively like educated on the topic, you would think. I would say, yeah, early 60s is when all women just went to work and everything was equal. And it's, <laughs> it's so not, not true. And, I have, and I'm not that qualified to even talk about it. When I, when I read no. for five seconds, nope. <laughs> and, and it still isn't. And as two guys standing here, right. we can't. can't just can't. That. Yeah. Anyway, so... The McMartin Preschool was a was a good place to send your kids. It was regarded as a really great place to send yeah. your kids in Manhattan Beach. And Virginia McMartin, the the old woman, she won community awards for it over the years. Like mm-hmm. she was Yeah. She was a pillar of the community, as they say. And then these people met a woman named Judy Johnson and her two year old <laughs> son. Made up. It's not. All right. And her two year old son, Matthew. Ah. Okay. So Judy Johnson was going through a divorce in mid to late nineteen eighty three. And she apparently called the McMartin Preschool to arrange daycare for Matthew, but she'd been told that they were full. Oh. Yeah. She brought him in anyway and apparently left him in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, do we have an extra kid? Who are you? I, I, I'm Matthew. <laughs> After some discussion, the people at, at McMartin, they apparently just accepted the kid. Well, see, now that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, they're, uh, good, they're good people. That's heartwarming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's going through a divorce and she's struggling financially. And she's also got a bit of a drinking problem, mm-hmm. and we'll later find out uh, some underlying mental illness. Okay, that that's been established. That's fact. Yeah, that is so. That is so. Not, bear that in mind. That is not wiki fact. That is fact. That is fact. fact. So one day in August of 1983, Matthew, the the kid, the two year old kid, mm-hmm. told Judy that he was having painful bowel movements. That happens. Um, probably not in that language, because he was too. <laughs> Pardon was me. Like, Mommy, if, if, if you can divert your attention from the soaps for a I, moment. I was, my bowel movements are particularly painful. But he probably said... You know, I actually sounded a lot like that as a kid. That was a pretty I good impression. I bet you did. But however he said it, he said that. Yeah. That he was and um, she took a look in that vicinity. General area, yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how we're... I mean, I have to mention this word a lot yeah. in this episode, and I'm not quite sure how to... Well, we'll, 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 I don't take know. It as, we'll take it as it comes. Okay? I don't know if I can say anus without laughing. <laughs> Shit. I you can't. are a professional, sir. I am. I am a wicked professional. <laughs> you know, you can always tell when someone's a professional when they use the phrase wicked professional. Yeah, you can always tell when the Super Bowl was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, you know, something to that effect. Right. Like and, you do. Yeah. And she took a look. She took in, a look down there. And, in the area. And all apparently seemed well. Okay. So she sent him off to school at McMartin's. So when she picked him up uh, later that day from McMartin, she took another look, and she alleges his anus was red and itchy looking, like blotchy. Okay, yeah. yeah. Could be something that shows up later. Yeah. Right. But instead of equating that with his bowel problems- From that like morning. as a case of diarrhea. Right. Uh, she immediately assumed that Ray Bucky, the lone male employee of the school, had molested her kid. She also thinks that her estranged husband had something to do with it, but that never really comes up again. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he paid someone to, I, harm, I, to harm. It never his came child up. It never or... came up again, and he wasn't okay. indicted or anything. No, nope. or ever heard from again. So she asks Matthew repeatedly, and he denies it. Right? Yeah. And eventually, um, she coaxes him enough that Matthew tells her that Ray Bucky took his temperature. Uh huh. And she sees this as confirmation. Of oh yeah, yeah. Of course. That's, right. Yeah. Right. So she takes him to the hospital. Because where else are you going to take someone's temperature? Right, yeah. And they examine him, and they don't find anything unusual at all. No, they just look, okay. So she just lets it go. All right, yeah. yeah. Well, then, end of the story, right? No, yeah, she does not the, let the it show, go. The show's over? Right. She doesn't let it go. She calls the cops. And she tells the police that Matthew told her that Ray Bucky had taken naked pictures of him mm-hmm. and tied him up, and that he'd seen Ray Bucky's penis. And nobody yeah. else heard the kid say this stuff, and to this day... Nobody is completely sure whether he confirmed or denied the shit his mom was saying. Well, a lot of kids, a lot of kids back then in this kind of thing, and I think we touched on this before. Right. They would, they they could be coached. They could be right. And in any case, he's, it's like when he's you get a two. false confession. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. He's two. It doesn't matter what he, he says. He barely knows two. what words are. Right. 
two and a half. He's, you know, he does not have the language skills to confirm or deny. Yeah, and, and, and to properly convey bowel movements right. and pain. So police, uh, they're mindful of the new wave of daycare abuse hysteria. Because um, it's everywhere, yeah, it's, didn't you see the news? It's sweeping the nation. It's top of the charts. It's, yeah. So they follow up, even though they're pretty sure nothing's going on. Mm -hmm. So they tell her to take Matthew to this place called um, CII, Children's Institute International, which was an abuse therapy clinic in Los Angeles. I think at the time it was on the campus of, it was on the UCLA campus. Okay. In any case, it was run by a woman named Key McFarlane. All right. And she'll be important in a minute. So Judy Johnson takes her kid there to have him examined. An interview, that sort of thing. Yeah. An intern, I swear to God, an intern did the examination. <laughs> Uh, it had to have been an intern. Yeah. All right. And based on that, based on the examination by an intern and an interview with the mother, uh, they diagnosed penile penetration as the cause of the redness. You're not... That That's not... Well, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. So she puts the kid in therapy, and this is when the allegations get really bizarre. According to Judy, her son had witnessed Ray Bucky decapitate a baby and yep. fly across the room. You know, kids don't engage in flights of fancy. Kids are 100% honest all the time. Especially at two and a half. Uh huh. And they, especially don't, they don't when, have an imagination yet. And especially when repeatedly questioned by insane people. Right. So the police, for some reason, they start an investigation and they start surveillance on Ray and the McMartin school. This episode's going to have a lot of head shaking. I have that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And then on September 7th, so like a month later, they served a search warrant and arrested Ray Bucky. Okay. For suspicion of child abuse. Yeah. yeah. And then on September 8th, they sent letters to the parents of hundreds of kids who had attended the school. Yeah. And former and yeah, present. Former and current. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that, so that's September 8th, 1983, the next day. And here's the text of that letter in its entirety Dear parent, this department is conducting a criminal investigation involving child molestation. Ray Bucky, an employee of Virginia McMartin's preschool, was arrested September 7th, 1983 by this department. The following procedure is obviously an unpleasant one, but to protect the rights of your children as well as the rights of the accused, this inquiry is necessary for a complete investigation. Records indicate that your child has been or is currently a student at the preschool. We are asking your assistance in this continuing investigation. Please question your child to see if he or she has been a witness to any crime or if he or she has been a victim. Our investigation indicates that possible criminal acts include oral sex, fondling of genitals, buttock or chest area, and sodomy, possibly committed under the pretense of taking the child's temperature. Also, photos may have been taken of children without their clothing. Any information from your child regarding having ever observed Ray Bucky to leave a classroom alone with a child during any nap period, or if they have ever observed Ray Bucky tie up a child, is important. Please complete the enclosed information form and return it to this department in the enclosed stamped returned envelope as soon as possible. We will contact you if circumstances dictate. We ask you to please keep this investigation strictly confidential because of the nature of the charges and the highly emotional effect it could have on our community. Please do not discuss this investigation with anyone outside your immediate family. Do not contact or discuss the investigation with Raymond Bucky, any member of the accused defendant's family, or employees connected with the Martin Preschool. So... Are you kidding <laughs> yeah. me? No, no, no. First of all, who arranges a release like that? What what right. professional department not only gives you the complete tenets of the case, but also suggestions? Everything, yeah. What to recommend to your children may have happened to them. No matter. Have you been tied up? Yeah. Have you had pictures taken of you with or without your knowledge? Yeah. Please ask your five-year-old <laughs> if, the, you know, your preschool child. In hindsight, yeah. If there's any chance that any of these things yeah. might have happened. Any of these very specific things. So no matter what, if you get that letter, you're probably pretty fucking freaked out, right? Yeah. Um, parents, and you're not necessarily going to your children first, because that's no, a hard thing no. to talk about with your Parents kids. came out of the woodwork yeah. after this. Um, they were they were convinced that something horrible had happened to their children. And if it, you, gets, oh, it gets so specific. Hold and on. It mentions if you it receive name, a letter, if you receive a letter like that. Don't you get awfully suspicious? Of course. Yeah, immediately. That's going to be your first thought. Mostly, what happened to my kid? Mostly because I don't have any children. But, right, but, yeah. but scary nonetheless. No, you're almost, reading that letter, you're almost forced to think that these things have happened. Yeah, and to like, believe they, they've they happened to you. They must have proof. If, they, if, they're, if they're that specific. And they have a list of, yeah. you know, charges and ideas, and right. this must have happened to hundreds of children. Mm-hmm. 
That's horrifying. Yeah. So people start taking a closer look at Ray Bucky, and he's sort of a weird dude. Like, he works in a daycare, which not a lot of men do, um, then or now. No, yeah, not now. Um, this is why. <laughs> Unfor- unfortunately, right. yeah. Um, he's also apparently in the habit of, this was a rumor, that he, he wore shorts a lot. Uh, like pretty short shorts without underwear, and his uh, his, his balls would hang out sometimes unintentionally, I, maybe or whatever. Well, which, even then, you're 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 looking at hindsight, right? Only monsters don't wear underwear, though. I right, know that. that is true. Yeah, uh, but that's really about it. That's all people can come up with. About right, like, I don't know. He wore some shorts. Yeah, it was the '80s. Didn't you have any gym teachers? Yeah, with questionable short taste. All of them. Yeah, every there you single go. one. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes their balls are going to come out. The world's an imperfect place. (laughs) All right, Bender, let's get back to work here. So after a little while, they have to release Ray Bucky due to a complete lack of evidence. Yeah, well, also they were able to arrest him without... Right, but... But you don't want to be wrong about that either. Right, but... They had to release him. Right. And if it hadn't been an election year, that probably would have been the end of it. Mm-hmm. But it released was. due to evidence can no longer work. Has yep. to go get a job at the farm store. <laughs> so there's this guy, Robert Philobosian. He's the district attorney at the time for Los Angeles. And he's seeking re-election. And child so abuse. So he's looking for yep, an issue. Child abuse is a real hot button issue. And he wants to seem tough on this kind of thing. You know, down uh, with this uh, sort of this, thing. On this non-existent yeah. crime that is panicking our 1983 nation. Right. You know. So he assigns the case to a ferocious assistant DA named Joan Matasinka. And which again, if these which again, if these were real crimes, if these were really happening, yeah, that's want the, thing. the most aggressive this lady, DA on. This lady specialized in child abuse cases. And at the time, the thinking was, um, as bumper stickers all around Manhattan Beach would soon uh, read, believe the children. Like that was the thinking at the time, and her heart was probably in the right place. Right, you want you want to catch these monsters right. and demons if they exist. But her heart being in the right place, and all of these people's hearts being in the right place, kind of makes it worse. The road to hell's paved with good intentions. Right. So Madisonka, uh, she had a social worker friend who was mm-hmm. the head of CII, Key McFarlane. Remember from okay, earlier? yeah, these yeah these are yep. all starting to relate. Yep, the the head of Children's Institute International, Key McFarlane. And so Madisinka urged parents to take their children there for counseling and interviews, all that stuff, the same stuff. To make, yeah, to as, make sure. Yep. As, no, as part of a pre-trial investigation. Right. And as was the custom at the time, Key McFarlane and her associates, they refused to take nothing happened for an answer. From <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that, yeah. They must be covering up. She examined um, about 400 children from the community. Jesus. And literally all of them eventually said that something had happened. I'm just going to put this out there. You know, there's a thing about false confessions. Right. Like when the police really start to stress someone out. Now imagine if that someone was, I don't know, a four-year-old child. Right. We'll, we'll get there. Actually, yeah. we'll get there right now. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. The Children's Institute International, CII, that they believe showed trauma to the genital area. I've been working with sexually abused children for 13 years. Key McFarland, then the director of CII examined and videotaped about 400 children using anatomically correct dolls. And I have never seen children as frightened as these children. This is a transcript, and this is pretty indicative of how these interviews went. I tried very hard to find YouTube footage of this stuff. And find any clips of this. Any uninterrupted clips of this stuff. It's just been scrubbed. Mostly everything about McMartin's been scrubbed from the record. There's hardly anything. Well, good and bad, yeah. All right. So here is interview number one, which is with an eight-year-old boy. McFarlane. Mr. Monkey is a little bit chicken, and he can't remember any of the naked games, but we think you can, because we know a naked game that you were around for, because the other kids told us, and it's called Naked Movie Star. Do you remember that game, Mr. Alligator? Or is your memory too bad? The boy says, um, I don't remember that game. McFarlane says, oh, Mr. Alligator. And the boy says, um, it's with puppets. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm getting that. That'd be really weird if yeah. it wasn't. The boy says, um, well, it's, um, a little song that me and a friend heard of. Right. And Fran so, says, not oh. so much a game. And the boy says, well, I heard out loud someone singing Naked Movie Star, Naked Movie Star. McFarlane. You know what, Mr. Alligator? 
That means you're smart, because that's the same song the other kids knew, and that's how we know you're really smarter than you look. So you better not play dumb, Mr. Alligator. The boy says, well, I didn't really hear a whole lot. I just heard someone yell it out in the someone yelled it. McFarlane, maybe, Mr. Alligator, you peeked in the window one day and saw them playing it. And maybe you could remember and help us. Well, no, I haven't seen anyone playing Naked Movie Star. I've only heard the song. McFarlane, what good are you? You must be dumb. Well, I don't know, really. Um, I don't remember seeing anyone play that because I wasn't there when I when people are playing it. You weren't? You weren't? That's why we're hoping maybe you saw a lot of these puppets weren't there, but they got to see what happened. The boy says, well, I saw a lot of fighting. McFarlane, I bet you can help us a lot, though, because, like, Naked Movie Star is a simple game, because we know about that game, because we just have had 20 kids told us about that game. Just this morning, a little girl came in and played it for us and sang it just like that. Do you think if I asked you a question, you could put your thinking cap on and you might remember, Mr. Alligator? And the boy says, maybe. It just, it goes on and on and on. I think, like you, I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm finding it hard not to punch you in the face of reading right. that. And just, just so we're clear, I know you yeah. didn't, you didn't go to the same elementary school that I went to. So, uh, Naked Movie Star, it's, it's a rhyming taunt. It's, it's, it's one of those, like, it's kids one of those things kids words. said in the 80s. Just like, um, I'm rubber, you're glue. Right. No, yeah. I, I, I get the concept. The whole thing was, kids make up dumb shit. The yeah. whole thing was, what you say is what you are. You're a naked movie star. Oh, okay. That's what that was. It, was, it's nothing. It's okay. literally nothing. I remember. I said it. Kids said it. I'm so, horrified. Yeah, there's a bunch of those. Like, um, and I understand. I. It's like knowing, and then hearing a transcript. Like it's one thing to know that these kind of things. Like there's that kind of baiting. If it's you literally will. like here. Yeah, it's terrible. It's. I don't want to hear any more no's. You dumb. Kid. No, no, detective dog. We're gonna figure this out. I don't want to hear any more no's. So either you answer what we want you to answer. Right. Or you will be here until you die, right. as far as you know, right. five-year-old child. So clearly these people, they're looking for it. Well, yeah, we already knew that. They're convinced that a thing happened, and whatever they have to say to the kids to get them to admit it, that's fine. Yeah. Um, this is, as we've learned now, with the benefit of hindsight, exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to do with kids. It's, I don't know. It, I think I think even – you can say with hindsight, but I think oh, even, yeah, at even, time, yeah, even at the time, you can see the it, evil I could see it. it. I mean, I, it, it's obvious to me. I don't yeah. know at the time because I was a kid. Uh, but it's exactly the same as false memory implantation mm -hmm. under hypnosis. You don't need to be hypnotized to believe it when you're six. Your memory is already pretty – Malleable. Yeah. Right. So before too long, everyone in town is convinced. They're convinced these people have molested upwards of 1,400 kids. That's a lot. Of, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I hate to belittle it, but that's a lot of work. That's a that's like you wouldn't have time to run yeah. a preschool. Yeah. So Ray is rearrested in March of 1984, and he's denied bond. Mm -hmm. And his mother, uh, Peggy McMartin Bucky, is also arrested and given a million dollar bond. So ah, she's but this, in. But this time there's evidence. There's yeah. children's testimony. So here's here's a little bit of what follows. The children of McMartin are still filled with lurid stories of their awful experience there. What did they say the devil would do to you? They said that if we told that the devil would come and kill our parents, and he said that we wouldn't live to be the age nine. What were they doing to you? Molesting me. What does um, that mean? What does molesting you mean? Touching us and places we don't want and then they would like threaten us like oh you don't say a word else we're gonna come to your house and kill everybody except for you and we're gonna send you to the devil and everything and they would scare us really much no region in this country is beyond the reach of the devil worshiper so there's a reason his voice bothers me and i just remembered what it is it's because i hear him say things like that yeah. it's because i hear him like so what did they say the devil was going to do? With conviction. Everything right. Everything he says is with conviction. Yeah. yeah. There, but, there's an honesty of voice, but not an honesty of subject. Yeah. The accusations get even more bizarre than that. Some of the kids say that they were taken in hot air balloons. They were molested in underground tunnels beneath the preschool. That's a big one. The underground tunnels, like, mm -hmm. a, like a network. Yes. There's a secret subway beneath mm -hmm. the preschool. Um, there were witches who could fly. Uh -huh. uh, animal sacrifices uh -huh. and children were flushed down toilets into secret rooms. It was it was all wow. over the map. Yeah, it was it was crazy. 
Children have um, really dumb imagination. So by this time, by the time they're rearrested, everyone, at least on the prosecution side, they know that Judy Johnson, the origin point for the accusations, is right. nuts. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Look at all this they've right. come up with. But she truly believes that Ray Bucky can fly mm -hmm. and read her thoughts. Shit like that. Now, let me ask you an important question. Mm -hmm. How much money was this preschool spending on hot air balloons <laughs> when half of the staff could already fly right. of their own will? Yeah. Everyone acknowledges that Judy Johnson is mentally ill, but the prosecution asserts that she's mentally ill because of this stuff. Right. Like, the, this is a mother grieving. Right. So- on March 22nd, 1984, all of them are charged with child abuse. That's all seven. All seven of everybody, the Everybody. They're, they're, they're charging yep. everybody yep. up in here. Okay. Not just Ray, not just his mom. And it's initially 115 counts of child abuse, and then it's expanded to 321 counts. So earlier when I said hundreds. Yeah. Literally. Hundreds literally of hundreds. Counts. Yep. Nice. So for a little under two years, everyone is in jail while they're having preliminary hearings. Mm-hmm. And the media, as they are wont to do, they ate this shit up with a spoon. Well, yeah, it's, it makes for good copy. Right. Uh, in particular, this one guy named uh, Wayne Satz. He worked for KABC News, a local, yeah, Los Angeles a local news affiliate. station. There. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he did a lot to add to the hysteria. He reported uh, even the wildest accusations like as fact. Right, the because, tunnels, you, because, all that stuff. because again, if you can say it with conviction, it's believed there's right. tunnels underneath this preschool. And he managed to scoop everyone. He got stories that nobody else did. Well, he's from KABC. No, it turns out that uh, he was in a romantic relationship. Let's just, he was fucking Key McFarlane at the time. Geraldo played his part too, you heard that. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. gripping paranoia. Yep. So, this drags on for a while. Eventually, one of the original prosecutors, a guy named Glenn Stevens, mm -hmm. he leaves the case in 1986. It's already been a couple of years. Um, he told, after he left the case, he told a couple of screenwriters that prosecutors had withheld evidence from the defense, right. including Judy Johnson's, the evidence of her prior mental illness, and the fact that her son never actually identified Ray Bucky as the guy who did this to him. Other they than just, that. Yeah. Other, other than, than the that, fact. Yeah. That he probably never said anything to that effect. Yep. Nor could he identify. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It gets worse. He also thinks that um, two people who met with all the families. Right. While this, while this was in its initial stages, influenced the children's testimony. No. You know who those people are? Michelle Smith and Lawrence Pastor. Oh. Michelle no, remembers no, part two. Don't yep. put another dime in that shoe box. Yep. So, the screenwriters, to their credit, they forwarded this information to the defense. <laughs> to their credit. Hey, do you know what's going yeah. on? Now, mind you, it's been years at this point. It has these been. People, it has been it has these been people are years. being held, we're talking yep. about. On um, this stuff, yeah, it drags on and on for a long time. And these people are in jail. Mm -hmm. they're, but they're awaiting what they know is going to be Vindication. a full exoneration. Yeah. yeah. And in 1986, uh, two big things happen. The first is a new prosecutor is assigned to the case. Right. And it's deemed the evidence against five of them is deemed incredibly weak. So charges are dropped for everyone except for Ray Bucky and his mother, Peggy McMartin Bucky. The other big thing is Judy Johnson mm -hmm. dies. Oh. Yeah. It turns out that Judy Johnson was a diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. And a raging no, alcoholic. No kidding. And the kid had been living with relatives since 1984. Yeah. After, after she was yeah. hospitalized. She got out, and then she killed herself with alcohol. Yeah. Uh, but the reports at the time, I read an article, a New York Times article. No, like, it's, it's they about were, this it was, a, it was suspicious. No, it was yeah. the death was, was deemed like a potential homicide. Ah, like whoever was protecting the McMartins. Yeah. But that's that's what happens. That's your 80s coke-fueled paranoia for you. Yep. Now, people still think that everyone involved with McMartin at the time is guilty. Of so, something. Yeah. Anything. Touching no matter how ridiculous yeah. it sounds to us, everybody thought these were child-molesting crazy people. We now welcome, also in Los Angeles, Debbie Nathan. Debbie is an investigative freelance journalist who has been covering the McMartin and other abuse trials around the country. All these parents are bizarro, huh? They're all whacked. 
Well, it's not really fair, I don't think, to deal with simply with these parents or with this particular case. You have to understand that all over the country there's a hysteria. And I don't think that it's a question with most of these kids of lying. I think that they um, have been brainwashed, if you will. They must at least be guilty of something. How else right. could we get 300 children? Right. So while they're in jail awaiting trial, they're beaten, they're pissed on. It's yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's not what you want to be yeah, in it's, jail it's for. Bad. That's, it's very, very, very that's bad. That's bottom rung of the prison yeah. ladder. But when the five are freed, and eventually Peggy gets out on bail too, things aren't really any better. The McMartin Preschool is set on fire at least twice. The the name is ruined. You right. know, you, and, you, yeah. go, you go and change your name yeah. at that point. You don't get to be. It's eventually torn down. Uh, yeah. And Peggy gets stabbed on the street. What? Yeah, it's horrible. And she eventually, she, she, she develops agoraphobia like you would. Like you I would, would immediately, yeah. Right. So finally, the trial begins in 1987. 1987. Yeah, fully four years after the first accusation. Right. The trial starts. And they have nothing. They've got nothing. What they have is Key McFarlane and the videotapes of the children, which are pretty and, useless. And they're and obviously puppets. they're obviously leading. And they have a jailhouse snitch who says Ray confessed to him. And they also have eleven. You know, they always they always lean on that. There's they there's do. always there's always a snitch. And and again, a good a good district attorney, a good prosecutor trying to do their job, trying to get they're looking for any angle to put the bad guy away. Right. But when you have someone who isn't actually a bad guy and you're looking for a snitch, and that's always been a little suspicious to me, that whole process. Yeah. It's a, well, it, we yeah. were roommates and he told me late one night, you know what? Even if I'm guilty of a crime, I'm not confessing to the dude in the next bunk. I mean, I guess if you're, so in, that he I guess if you're in, if you're in that situation, if, well, if you're in jail, it probably gets boring after so a while and you have to talk about what I, you did. I, well, I, w I would talk about what I was accused of. I'd be like, hey, you know how... I'm constantly getting beaten and shivved. <laughs> well, here's what they say I did. I would maintain my innocence. Yeah. I wouldn't. As would I, even if I were guilty. Right. Even if you were guilty, you'd still Especially maintain. Especially if I was guilty. Yeah. Liar city, man. Come right. on. So they have the jailhouse snitch. Who has since recanted. And then they have 11, 11 out of the 400 kids. <laughs> 11 children testified, remaining. And none of it works. Well, 11 was just the number of kids they were able to continue to convince something had happened. So here's a little bit of the CBS Evening News in 1989 okay. while this was happening. In Los Angeles today, defense attorneys began their closing arguments in a child molestation case that's attracted national attention during a solid marathon trial. Charges against five co-defendants have been dropped because of insufficient evidence, leaving a mother and her son, both former preschool teachers, as defendants. But whatever the verdict, authorities see the case as a symbol of an increasing national tragedy that's become a national scandal. Jerry Bowen reports. California's McMartin preschool scandal. It began as the most notorious child abuse case in American history, with charges that hundreds of youngsters had been sexually molested at the now defunct nursery. Can you your right hand? 31 months and 13 million taxpayer dollars later, it's become the nation's longest, most expensive criminal trial ever, and fair or not, a symbol of every parent's worst fear. It had an enormous impact initially, a recognition that uh, the problem of out-of-home sexual abuse was a real one. In response to McMartin and similar cases, scores of states and cities enacted tough screening requirements for preschool workers. 25 states expanded parents' rights, making unannounced visits to preschools a legal right. But in the five years since McMartin hit the headlines, surveys show the problem of child abuse has continued to worsen, and that the nightmare of physical, sexual, or emotional abuse is still far more likely to occur in a child's home than anywhere else. Child Protective Services. Okay, uses drugs and alcohol. Okay, what, undressed, both of them being undressed? Last year, there were 2,300,000 reports of child abuse nationwide, up 3% from the year before, and half of all the reports were substantiated. He eventually ended up saying, I'm going to drop the kids off at the mall, like you drop kitties and doggies off. Experts suspect much more is occurring than is reported, but what's known is grim enough. Just over half the cases involve neglect, abandonment. One quarter involved physical abuse, with the growth category being fatalities, up nearly 40% since 1985. 
That's three children dying each day in this country from maltreatment. A level of violence which social workers link directly to parents using crack and cocaine. Kinds of abuse that we thought we really had a handle on five years ago, and we find out today that we don't have a handle on it, and in fact the problem is worse. The problem is so bad that in 43 states it's becoming routine to review child death cases to absolutely rule out foul play. The good news is we're doing more. Uh, the bad news is the, the better we open our eyes, the more clearly we see the more garbage we're finding. That's sort of apropos. <laughs> The more garbage they're the finding. More garbage. It's amazing what we're able to dig up. It's. I mean, you can hear it in that, right? That was a contemporaneous report. That was right, a, right. That was that was the actual. You can hear that there's no, the time. but there's no sarcasm. There's no there's no yeah. snide to it like what we do. And it's uh, it's a growing epidemic. Of course, of course, child neglect is a growing epidemic. Of course, hitting children is bad, but that's not what. When you you're, that's you're not linking the, the McMartin the, thing to this, and it's not that's not the accusation. Yeah, they were talking about crack babies, right? Yeah, which is another total myth. I don't know if you know that. In or front not. Of, there was in, no such thing. In front of a wall that says "Say No to Drugs," I thought that right. was well placed. It has nothing to do with anything, and yeah. So anyway, finally, in 1990, Peggy is acquitted on all charges. Thankfully. Oh, gee, finally, yep. in 1990, from 1983 19, to 1990. 90. From 1983 till 1990, yep, a little old woman, yeah, was one of the biggest criminals in this country. Did you get a look at her? She was. <laughs> that's the, that's what the face of evil. She was. did something. I'm not. Scared that was actually one of the. That was one of the key things. Was they looked at her face when and they said warned? She no, did when they something? when they warn against the satanic ritual abuse, that it's it's usually the most normal looking people. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me silver hair is tell silver lies. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Peggy's acquitted. Uh, Ray, though, he I, he gets a hung jury. Yeah. 56 of the charges, I think, were acquittal. And then like 12 charges or something that he had were hung. <sighs> and so they retry him. Yeah. And they get another hung jury. Not an acquittal, but another hung another jury. Another hung jury. Nice. So then they give up. And it's now, late but, but, then, but, but now you're also getting you're also getting hung juries at the height of this panic. Right. Even at the height of this panic, you couldn't get a complete conviction. Right. Uh, but he spent over five years in jail, mm -hmm. and for something he was never convicted of. Nope. And the trial remains the most expensive and longest criminal trial in American history. Yeah, that's Fif what they were just saying. fifteen over fifteen million dollars was spent Jeez. for nothing, no convictions. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, nothing. Right. You got nothing for your money. So now, with the benefit of hindsight, we can we can see what happened and why it happened. You can see you can see the root cause of the panic. You right. can see And we know that these people didn't do this. Uh huh. And we know that it ruined their lives. Right. There's there's always going to be a negative stigma. Even if even if you're completely acquitted, even if you're found to have never done anything. Right. There's such a stink in the air. And believe it or not, um, some people still believe these accusations. There's a big conspiracy. Some people still want to believe the I negative. Know. There's a there's a big conspiracy thing out there. Um, that's what you do find on YouTube if you look for this it's, stuff. You find a lot of conspiracy theories. Yep. Um, there's a big conspiracy there about the tunnels. Um, some geologist quack and a former FBI guy. That's weird. You usually don't use geologists and quack in the <laughs> right. same sentence. Well, yeah. yeah. But they say there really were tunnels under the McMartin building. Okay. Uh, even they, they, they like, looked like and they steam weren't there. Tunnels? Yeah. <laughs> like tunnels? No. Um, they, there were trash pits under it from before the building was built. Right. But the building was built in like 1965. <laughs> right. And But people think the tunnels existed and they were filled in once the accusations came to light uh. in order to hide the truth. In the middle of the night, yeah, cement mixers nuts. came. Yeah, no, they were they were they, they, they took the they tunnels. took soil samples, and some of this soil is newer. Like they tried to do carbon dating or whatever, right? Yeah, and they found they found some debris, some debris that was from 1984, some, some, way some down garbage. below. Yeah. Maybe some garbage. It, <sighs> this is a modern Pepsi bottle, right? They didn't have Pepsi free back then. So that's basically it. The elder uh, McMartins have died since. Yeah, um, Ray Bucky hasn't. 
He's still alive somewhere in America. He just wants to live a quiet life. I was, yeah, I wasn't going to ask where he yeah, went because be a, be it's none guy. of our business. Yeah. He has not, like, so many of these people are forced into, like, advocacy for this kind of stuff. Right. And there's still that pallor of, well, he must have did some. Yeah, you could, you can't do nothing to be accused. Right. Never mind the mental condition of your accuser. Yeah. Never mind, never mind the railroading justice system. So, again, you can draw... A straight line from Mike Warnke. He was trying to sell books. He was trying to sell books and comedy trying to albums. Comedy yeah. albums, yep. And well, really, he was trying to sell Jesus. I mean, if you believe, yeah, but he him, wasn't. He wasn't like trying he was, to sell he was, it. He was. He was. He was for the greater good in his mind, probably right. bringing people, bringing and, people to and Robert Tilton, right? Yeah, okay. Wow, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but but right. seriously, you can draw a straight line right from mm-hmm. Warnke to Michelle Remembers, to Michelle straight Remembers, to this, straight back, straight to this on show. through, right. And this wasn't, this wasn't, although this one terrifying. is, is probably the worst of the panic. Yeah. It's not where it concerns daycare. So it's not the worst outcome. Um, a lot of these smaller trials that were just regional Led and never got the national yeah. press. A lot of those people were just convicted and forgotten about. Yep. Buried under the jail. Right. Which is In what, which is what would have happened with the West Memphis three, which is what did happen for 20 years with the West I was, Memphis yeah, three. Yeah. I was going to say, if you but want. if there hadn't been, a, if there hadn't coincidentally been an HBO documentary crew there, no, there would have we, never we been any heard, critical yeah. thinking about that after the fact. Nope. That would have been that. And you always see these people with their appeals of death sentences and you go, come on, man, give it up. You're it's been 20 years. Yeah. And you, you know, know, I'm, pe- I'm even me. I, I am generally speaking, I believe in our judicial system, mm-hmm. I, the, I, the appeals process yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I believe in the whole the whole system, the checks and balances of it. And when I see a thing like this that is so obviously unbalanced, obviously, unchecked, yeah, yeah, it drives me crazy. I wanted to be a lawyer from the time I was a very little kid. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed with Effie Bailey when I was a little kid. Right, right. Yeah. Pre O.J. Simpson trial, it yeah. was, I had this book called "The Defense Never Rests." Somebody gave it to me. Yeah. And I, I was obsessed. Fascinated I, by justice. Yeah. I, I read Black's Law when I was like, tw- like I was great. Right. Uh, yeah. I was nuts about the law. And to an you, extent, you I are still a precocious am. child. To, no, to an extent, I still am. And I, and this stuff makes me so sad uh, because it's, I know, it's sickening. I know that there have to be some that I've never heard of and never will hear of. Right. That where the outcome wasn't all right in the end. Yeah. It's, it's a good system, but it's not a perfect system. And prosecutorial misconduct happens more often than right. probably we think or we would even know. There's the the bigger case, the um the one they made a documentary about again, um, capturing the Freedmans. Right. Those two people, they were convicted, yeah. and that was that was a lot more a gray area thing because the father he was actually yeah. a pedophile. Yeah. But he didn't do it. He, I mean, it's pretty clear now he didn't do anything to those kids, and the son definitely didn't. And mm-hmm. he still hasn't cleared his name. He's out of prison now, but he still hasn't cleared his name. Well, you don't. Yeah. Jesse Friedman, and he probably never will, just because disbelieving this critical cr- thinking, critical critically thought about this about about crimes against children mm-hmm. is it's whether it, it whether feels it's, wrong. Yeah. It always, it always will. Cause, cause you it's the don't want to be the one who doubts yeah, that. You don't want to. It's any kind of horrendous crime like this. Right. It's, you can't be critical about it in public. No. At all. No, absolutely not. Because if you are defending a monster. And you also don't want to. You, you are, you are a monster. Yeah. You also, you also don't want to have to wait for proof. Right. And you it's don't want to be wrong. Without, you yeah, really don't want to be wrong. The justice system is supposed to be without reasonable doubt, but you're not you're not programmed as a human. No, to we're, even we're programmed. Think. We're programmed to see patterns, right? And that's absolutely what you're looking for in this, and especially at that time, you're looking right. for this these terrifying. You're looking you're looking for monsters. And who could and who could blame you? What is what's better than protecting our the children? Innocent and, yeah. Like of course, oh, I'm of sorry. course, your no, heart no, no, is in the no, right no. place. You don't want kids to be molested in tunnels. I think we just, <laughs> I think we just said it. I said protecting the innocent. You said protecting the children. Protecting the children is more important than protecting the innocent. I think we think of children as well. No, that's but that's what I meant. Inherently but, innocent, even though a lot of times they're not. Kids, they lie and they some cheat. Some kids are and shitty. They smell yeah, bad and they put. <laughs> they put boogers on your furniture, and it's awful. <laughs> yeah, but but no, I, what I was saying was uh, 
we tend to think of the children as the innocent, but what about the innocent in these? It's true. In these crimes, the innocent are the accused. Ray, Ray Bucky's lawyer said that he was absolutely stunned at how brave he was in facing this. He, mm-hmm. he knew he would be exonerated because he didn't do anything. And he faced every day. But at the, but at the same time, he knew this was destroying his life. He knew right, but that he, he had to fight this. He he injustice. never he never gave up. He never gave up. He never bargained out. He never yeah. He protested his innocence and kept an air of dignity. Right, which I'm, is pretty impossible to do when, when you're when you're being accused this of kind this of monster. Mon- yeah. yeah, except so. when talking to his cellmate. Apparently, that's just right. One right, yeah. just that one time. He uh-huh. yeah. So that's that's about all I got. Um, wow. Well, yeah, that's. It's it's a tough issue, yeah. I think. Yeah. I put it on you out there, but I don't think anyone could disagree with us. You'd be, you'd be amazed. Seriously, search for McMartin be, Tunnels be, on YouTube. It's ridiculous. There are tunnels. It is ridiculous, these people. Oh, Go ahead man. and send send your heat mail. It's fine. Yeah, well well we can we can take it. We're big I can boys. totally take it, tunnel boys. Yeah. How thick would that concrete have to be, by the way? Because if you fill a tunnel pretty fucking thick. <laughs> So you'd have to like you gotta get the quick you gotta get the quick set stuff and you gotta yeah, yeah. so you'd have a like a ten foot block of concrete yeah under the land mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's not gonna lead to any structural issues later no no ah, it's very solid just gonna burn your shit down anyway <laughs> fair enough. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter at Liar City Podcast. 